When the gas turbine is operating at 100% speed, lubricating oil is pumped from the lube oil tank by the main lube oil pump and is delivered to the pump discharge header. VR1 limits the discharge pressure of the main lube oil pump to 101 psi. Lube oil is cooled in the active heat exchanger, cleaned in the active oil filter, and passes through an orifice plate to the bearing header. VPR2 maintains oil pressure in the bearing header at approximately 26 psi. The bearing header then supplies filtered lube oil to the hydraulic oil system, accessory drive gear, and the turbine and generator bearings. After lubricating the accessory drive gear and the turbine number one bearing, lube oil drains directly back into the lube oil tank. Lubricating oil from turbine number two and number three bearings and from the generator bearings drains into surge tanks located in the turbine base. The forward surge tank drains into the lube oil tank. The exhaust fan on the mist eliminator draws air from the surge tanks in the turbine base. Oil droplets suspended in the airstream are separated by coalescing filters within the mist eliminator. The mist-free air is vented to atmosphere and any recovered lube oil drains back into the lube oil tank. To see the flows throughout the entire lube oil system, click on the Show Me button. Otherwise, click on Previous Menu. If lube oil pressure in the pump discharge header exceeds 101 psi, the cup disc in the body of the relief valve will be forced in the direction of the spring, overcoming the spring tension, and lube oil will flow through the cutouts in the seat bushing and return to the lube oil tank. The top side of the diaphragm inside VPR2-1 is connected to the bearing header downstream of the regulator valve. The bottom side of the diaphragm is connected to the actuator spring. If lube oil pressure in the bearing header should increase, the diaphragm will be forced downward, lowering the valve plug until the bearing header pressure is reduced to 26 psi. If lube oil pressure in the bearing header should decrease, the diaphragm will be forced upward by the actuator spring, raising the valve plug until the bearing header pressure is restored to 26 psi. During a normal turbine startup procedure, the lead operator will select Auto and Execute on the operator interface of the turbine control panel. The protection system will check for a ready-to-start permissive from the lube oil tank temperature switch 26QN-1. Turbine startup will not be permitted unless the temperature of the oil in the lube oil tank is 60 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. If all protection system checks are satisfactory, the auxiliary lube oil pump will start and the turbine will begin its crank cycle. The orifice check valve between the auxiliary pump discharge and the main pump discharge provides lube oil flow from the auxiliary lube oil pump to the main lube oil pump in order to lubricate and prime the main pump at startup. While the turbine is starting, the shaft-driven main lube oil pump is at a speed insufficient to develop operating pressure. As long as AC power is available, the auxiliary pump supplies oil throughout the lube oil system until the turbine reaches approximately 95% speed. At this point, the control system shuts off the auxiliary lube oil pump and lube oil pressure is maintained by the main lube oil pump. With the gas turbine operating at 100% speed, lubricating oil is pumped from the lube oil tank by the main lube oil pump. As long as pressure in the pump discharge header is greater than 70 psi, pressure switch 63QA-1 remains closed and the auxiliary lube oil pump remains in standby. Lube oil is cooled, filtered, and a portion is sent to the trip oil system. The remainder flows to the bearing header. VPR2-1 maintains oil pressure in the bearing header at approximately 26 psi. The bearing header then supplies filtered lube oil to the hydraulic oil system, the accessory drive gear, and the turbine and generator bearings. Should the lube oil pressure in the pump discharge header drop below 70 psi, pressure switch 63QA-1 will initiate an alarm and activate the auxiliary lube oil pump. The auxiliary pump will remain on until it has been manually shut off at the motor control center. 
Normally, turbine shutdown is initiated when the lead operator selects stop and execute on the operator interface of the turbine control panel. The turbine may also shut down automatically when the control and protection systems detect an unsafe operating condition. In either case, the control system will turn on the auxiliary lube oil pump when the turbine speed drops below 94% of operational speed. The auxiliary lube oil pump operates throughout the shutdown and cooldown periods. The auxiliary pump is shut off when the lead operator selects stop and execute once more on the operator interface. The unit will shut down automatically if lube oil temperature exceeds a specified limit. Temperature switch 26QA-1 will activate an alarm if the temperature of the lube oil in the bearing header exceeds 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Should the oil temperature increase to 175 degrees Fahrenheit, temperature trip switches 26QT-1A and 1B will trip the unit. During turbine operation, pressure trip switches 63QT-2A and 2B monitor the lube oil pressure in the bearing header at the back of the generator farthest from the lube oil pumps. If pressure trip switches 63QT-2A and 2B sense a drop in lube oil pressure below 8 PSI, the emergency lube oil pump will start and the unit will trip on low lube oil pressure. Pressure switch 63QL-1 acts as a backup to pressure trip switches 63QT-2A and 2B and will activate the emergency lube oil pump if oil pressure in the bearing header drops below 6 PSI. The control system will also activate the emergency lube oil pump during shutdown of the turbine if AC power is not available to operate the auxiliary lube oil pump. The emergency pump will operate throughout the shutdown and cooldown periods and must be manually shut off at the motor control center. The unit will shut down automatically if lube oil temperature exceeds a specified limit. Temperature switch 26QA-1 will activate an alarm if the temperature of the lube oil in the bearing header exceeds 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Should the oil temperature increase to 175 degrees Fahrenheit, temperature trip switches 26QT-1A and 1B will trip the unit. During a normal turbine startup procedure, the lead operator will select Auto and Execute on the operator interface of the turbine control panel. The protection system will check for a ready-to-start permissive from the lube oil tank temperature switch 26QN-1. Turbine startup will not be permitted unless the temperature of the oil in the lube oil tank is 60 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. If all protection system checks are satisfactory, the auxiliary lube oil pump will start and the turbine will begin its crank cycle. To perform the low lube oil pressure auxiliary pump start test, the isolation valve should be held closed and the test valve should be opened gradually to lower the lube oil pressure in the piping to pressure switch 63QA-1. When the lube oil pressure falls to the setting of pressure switch 63QA-1, the auxiliary lube oil pump should start. To perform the low lube oil pressure emergency pump start test, the isolation valve should be held closed and the test valve should be opened gradually to lower the lube oil pressure in the piping to pressure switch 63QL-1. When the lube oil pressure falls to the setting of pressure switch 63QL-1, the emergency lube oil pump should start. During turbine operation, pressure trip switches 63QT-2A and 2B monitor the lube oil pressure in the bearing header at the back of the generator farthest from the lube oil pumps. If pressure trip switches 63QT-2A and 2B sense a drop in lube oil pressure below 8 PSI, the emergency lube oil pump will start and the unit will trip on low lube oil pressure. The control system will also activate the emergency lube oil pump during shutdown of the turbine if AC power is not available to operate the auxiliary lube oil pump. The emergency pump will operate throughout the shutdown and cooldown periods and must be manually shut off at the motor control center. 
The top side of the diaphragm inside VPR 2-1 is connected to the bearing header downstream of the regulator valve. The bottom side of the diaphragm is connected to the actuator spring. If lube oil pressure in the bearing header should increase, the diaphragm will be forced downward, lowering the valve plug until the bearing header pressure is reduced to 26 psi. If lube oil pressure in the bearing header should decrease, the diaphragm will be forced upward by the actuator spring, raising the valve plug until the bearing header pressure is restored to 26 psi.